most dynamic milestone in boxing history. Champion Jack Johnson versus challenger James J. Jeffries. One of the great events in sports history is just 24 hours away as we look at downtown Reno, Nevada on July 3rd, 1910. Tomorrow, heavyweight champion Jack Johnson will defend his crown against the man who is already a legend in his time, former heavyweight champion James J. Jeffries. Jeffries retired undefeated in 1904, over six years ago. The city of Reno is in a frenzy as 15,000 fight fans swarm into the little town. This is the fight the entire boxing world has been waiting for. A clash between the two men who are ranked as the greatest heavyweight champions of all time. Let's go back six months to the time when Jeffries first opened his training camp and look at what six years of inactivity has done to the former champion. Here we see Jeff shaking hands with well-wishers. His weight at this time is over 314 pounds. Also visiting Jeff are former heavyweight champions John L. Sullivan to your right and James J. Corbett to your left. There had been an 18-year feud between these two great fighters, which is finally patched up on this very day. To the delight of cameramen, they go through a mock sparring session with the mustached John L. showing some of the feints he used over two decades ago when he was bare-knuckle champion. A final handshake ended all of the bad feeling between the two. Let's go back in time three more years to 1907, when Jeffries, in vest and long shirt sleeves, was introduced at the Burns Squires championship fight. Jeffries weighed 334 pounds. Now you can see the almost impossible job Jeff had getting back to his fighting weight of 220. We're seeing the stadium being built, which will feature the biggest sporting event of the century. This is the first time in pugilistic history that an arena has been built specifically for one special prize fight. The promoter is the fabled Tex Rickard, who paid $120,000 in gold to capture this sporting plum. It's now July 1st, just three days until Jeffries and Johnson enter the ring. Unbelievably, you are looking at a 226-pound Jim Jeffries. Jeff has done what many experts had predicted was virtually impossible. He has recaptured his fighting form and shed over 110 pounds in the process. On this particular day, he's loosening up in preparation for three rounds of sparring with the legendary Joe Shawinski. A crowd of over a thousand fight fans is present to watch Shawinski, a man considered one of the great fighters of the era, demonstrate to Jeffries the various moves he used to whip Jack Johnson, the present champion. Shawinski, the smaller fighter in long white boxing tights, enjoys a unique distinction in heavyweight history. Not only did he hold Jeffries to a 20-round draw, a remarkable feat considering that Jeffries has never been beaten, but in addition, he knocked out Jack Johnson in three rounds back in 1901, which places Shawinski in a category with the great fighters of the period. He thinks nothing of giving away as much as 100 pounds to an opponent and then proceeds to knock him out. Jeffries has said many times he considers himself very fortunate to get Joe to work out with him during these last days of training. Just five miles away, heavyweight champion Jack Johnson is working out with Jim Flynn. Johnson's reputation of invincibility is spread like wildfire as the boxing writers are using a flood of adjectives to describe his workouts. The great Johnson, the unbeatable Johnson are but a few of the quotes which have been written each day. It's 6.30 in the morning, July 4th, 1910. It seems scarcely conceivable that this seemingly carefree James J. Jeffries in just six hours will be in the toughest fight of his life against one of the greatest fighting machines in the history of boxing. At the same time, Champion Johnson takes his morning constitutional. Now at 9 o'clock in the morning, the trains are arriving every half hour, bringing fight fans to see the match that has been billed as the Battle of the Giants. No sooner does one trade unload when the next one pulls in jam to capacity. Outside the arena, four hours before fight time, $50 ringside seats are being scalped for $125 each. And in 1910, $125 represented the purchasing power of nearly $1,000 today. Inside the arena, the lucky fight fans with tickets waved to motion picture cameras three hours before fight time. Extensive motion picture coverage has been planned as the entire world waits for the results. 20 minutes before fight time, the light heavyweight champion of the world, Philadelphia Jack O'Brien, is introduced to the packed stadium. The next introduction, one of the great heavyweights of this era, Sam Lankford, affectionately called the Boston Tar Baby. Sam wants a shot at the heavyweight title himself. Here's A. Battelle, featherweight champion of the world, and ranked as one of the greatest boxers of all time, regardless of division. But the man who gets the finest ovation is bare-knuckle champion Jake Kilrain. Fans will never forget Jake's 75-round fight with champion John L. Sullivan. 
At exactly three minutes to one, a hush settles over the stadium as champion Jack Johnson makes his way through the crowd. Jack always insists on being the first to enter the ring. He takes this superstition so seriously that it's actually part of the conditions of the contract. From the moment Johnson enters the ring, the big golden smile, which is his trademark, never leaves his face. A grimly determined Jeffries enters the ring four minutes later. 16,520 excited fight fans are on the edge of their seats as round one gets underway. The fight is scheduled for 45 three-minute rounds and the temperature is 110 degrees of suffocating heat. Champion Johnson is in brilliant physical condition, weighing 212 pounds. Jeffries, at 226 pounds, is fighting at the same weight at which he last defended the heavyweight championship in 1904 against Jack Monroe. It was a tremendous task for Jeff to get himself into the rock-hard conditioned fighter he is today. Jeffries won the heavyweight championship of the world 11 years ago, on June 9, 1899, when he knocked out Bob Fitzsimmons in 11 rounds. After successfully defending the crown seven times in that period between 1899 and 1904, he retired undefeated, having beaten every prominent heavyweight who wanted a chance at his crown. Round one draws to a close with both men conserving their energies, knowing there are a possible 44 rounds. As round four begins, neither fighter has gained a clear advantage. In rounds two and three, the two men continued feeling each other out, searching for weaknesses, using early caution. The third man in the ring is none other than promoter Tex Rickard. For weeks, Johnson and Jeffries haggled about who should referee the fight. Rickard attempted to solve the problem by asking the President of the United States, William Howard Taft, to be the referee. When President Taft declined, Rickard then sent a wire to the famous British author of Sherlock Holmes, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, who also respectfully declined. Finally, Rickard, who has never refereed a prize fight in his life, nominated himself as the third man in the ring. While he was in training, Champion Johnson had read the glowing accounts of the giant-like strength of Jeffries. It said that no man living can tie Jeffries up in close. When Johnson heard this, he said that he was not only going to tie Jeffries up in the clutches, but that he was going to actually twist Jeff's arms behind his back in order to completely neutralize the strength of the challenger. Johnson lands a stinging overhand right, which is the best punch of the fight thus far, and round four comes to an end. We go into round 13 with the challenger Jeffries tiring badly. In rounds 5 through 12, Johnson has slowly but methodically worn Jeffries down with hard right uppercuts in the clinches and powerful lefts and rights to the body. The fight is definitely going the way Johnson has planned it. The champion is setting his own pace, letting the years of inactivity, the tremendous heat, and his own powerful punching slowly take their toll on the 37-year-old challenger. When Jeffries retired six years ago, Tommy Burns won general recognition as heavyweight champion by going around the world and defeating every heavyweight who laid claim to the crown. Burns lost his title December 26, 1908, just two years ago to Jack Johnson in Sydney, Australia in a spectacular contest. Johnson returned to the United States and last year, in 1909, successfully defended his title against the middleweight champion of the world, Stanley Ketchell. This is Johnson's second title defense, and Jeffries is considered by far the most formidable opponent that Johnson has ever had to face. Both men are now feeling the effects of this tremendous heat, but it's the champion, Johnson, who definitely appears to be the stronger of the two. A smashing right hand by Johnson is followed by a jolting right uppercut. Champion Johnson is getting a $60,000 guarantee for this title offense, by far the biggest ever made to date. Jeffrey's guarantee is $40,000, plus the astronomical figure of $75,000 for signing with Rickard for the fight. 1,500 Never Say Die fans crashed over the fence when there simply were no more seats to be sold. In Rickard's financial breakdown of the fight, these same 1,500 crashers were listed as complimentaries. In the previous round, Johnson relentlessly pursued Jeffries all over the ring. Here in round 15, he rushes Jeff against the ropes and lands a hard right uppercut. 
He follows it up with three left hooks, and Jeffries goes down for the first time in his entire professional career. The crowd leaps to its feet at the shock of what's happened. Jeff rises and gets hit with a smashing left hook, which sends him out of the ring. Jeff's chief second, with the help of a fan, lifts him to his feet. Johnson rushes Jeffries across the ring, where he floors Jeff with a paralyzing right to the head. Rickard steps between the two fighters as Sam Berger, in dark vest and hat, rushes in and stops the fight to save Jeffries from further punishment. This startling conclusion puts an end to the most dramatic heavyweight championship fight in the last 75 years. James J. Jeffries suffers the first and only defeat of his entire professional career, while Jack Johnson successfully defends his World Heavyweight Championship.